the lilac set has a stamp set with coordinating cutting dies and you can make some beautiful uh, frameable pieces or mixed media journal things and of course card making and scrapbooking. So I want to show you a couple of things here and I've opened up the packages already and you'll see a lot of ideas and suggestions on the back and I've already got it in my storage system here with the stuff tainer and the Crafters Companion have a wonderful magnetic sheet and this allows me to keep my dies together and I could put the stamps to cling on the back but they also cling uh, beautifully to the inside of the stuff tainer and this allows me to see exactly uh, what I have available and easy to work with. So let's start out with the stamps and show you a couple of things you can do with the stencil template that comes in the package as well. So these cling stamps are beautifully trimmed and you're just going to press them onto your clear handle and I'm working here with just a black ink to quickly show some options. So I've trimmed my paper already to a card size so that I don't have to do any more work than is needed. I sometimes hate to cut away a part that I've colored and worked on so I'm starting a little bit smaller. And let's see, it's easy enough to do your different images where nothing overlaps. So let's do this. So that could be a beautiful card with just the simplicity of that. But now let's make use of the template. Now we call it a template because you've got both the positive and the negative pieces. So I've got some little bridges to find and if I pull right at that juncture I can release them easily. And I just realized that I first want to do this. I want to make sure that I've turned this template the direction that fits the stamps. And it's easiest to find and mark it right here at the beginning. So I'm just going to take a, a Sharpie and I'm going to write on this a big L for lilac. And now I know that all the rest of the pieces are going the right direction when I mark them. So I'm going to have this be L3 for three leaves and L2 and maybe we'll make these butterfly one two and three. Okay, if I flip them over, they're not going to fit. So it helps to write on them something that helps me spot which side is which. Okay, so now I can use this positive, this is like the window pane and the other is the window frame. So now I can use that to cover up that area. And if I want to stamp some leaves, Okay, so now you can't, you can barely see it, but my um, mask is now covering the lilacs, and I can come in here with the leaves, and it'll look like they're behind. If you have the die set, you can cut another additional set or cut your own uh, dies, but if you're working with just this one, it's nice to have these pieces provided for you. So now let's put some more of the lilac in the background. And now I want to cover both the leaves and the lilac. And if you want to move them a little bit inside the edge, that will allow for an even better overlap here. Okay. 
So now you can begin to see a whole lilac bush here with our butterfly. Because the shapes are so close to the edge, I will often take the acetate that comes in the package and tape it together just to cover a little bit more over the edge. Now I'll show you a quick way to apply color through the stencil and I'm using the Dreamweaver brushes, stencil brushes, and I have an ink pad here with a lot of different colors to it that's a splendor pad. And now I'm going to isolate just my purples, test it and see what kind of, how much ink I've got. And Now I can quickly come in and find all of the lilac. I'm working through the stencil that's hardly visible at the moment, but this will define that first cluster of, of lilac. So you can see how the same way we'll um, go to the greens now on the leaves. Now I might want to use this piece to cover the inside to isolate that area. This is where your Picasso metal stencil really comes in handy as well to block one area from another or cover an area. Test your color here. And now I can make darker color from behind. So that gives you the idea of how we're making use of all of the templates and things. And now I'll show you just real quick how we use the Picasso to make clouds. And again, my little stencil will come in handy. cover this butterfly. So this shape up here is going to work for the clouds and we might want to cover these holes that I'm not using with a bit of tape. So now with uh, blue on my stencil brush and again test it just to see how much ink you have because a soft touch will work quite nicely. And then with a circular motion coming off of that edge, you can simply move it and reposition it to get a variety of soft little bits for clouds here. It seems to work the best if you start at the top of your card and work your way down. pencils will continue the soft look that I've started with the inks and brushes and In this case I want to make sure that the lilac behind is darker overall and that way it will stand out from the one in the foreground. So I think now I can remove all of my templates here. And I think even from there I like to finish it off with some color pencil work that will be quick and easy to just push the values a little bit
Here's another little tip so as not to lose the pieces of your uh, template. You can take a sheet protector, trim away the um, side, and even cut the corners a little bit if you want, just to have it fit a little bit better in the stuff-tainer. And then you can put all of these pieces in and know that you can find them again when you come back to your next project. So this now can just fit inside and keep everything together. So here's a couple tips about working with the cutting dies. You can see that um, on all of our wafer dies, the cut is on that inside edge and then you have the open window to see where to line it up and you should be able to move it around until it lines up evenly all the way around and then you can die cut it. So this gives you a nice way that perhaps you want to do some pop-up cards or um, even do a whole pattern just with butterflies. So you can see where this might be pretty tricky to get uh, stamped evenly but by doing um, cutouts, you can certainly position them and create a lot of beautiful patterns for your cards. This lilac set is large enough that if you wanted to do a large scrapbook page or a frameable piece or the creative painters do so many fun things with these. But other times, if you're doing a card, you can simply start by deciding what size you want it to be and then work your way out to the edges like we did on this one. Doing a backdrop like this, the leaves were designed in such a way that you can actually tuck them in or under the piece and you might use several of these kind of at different angles and things to look like um, your lilac shrubs. I was comparing lilacs and wisteria and even though the blossoms are different you could get away <laughs> with turning these around the other way and end up having a beautiful uh, cascade that sort of looks like wisteria and the leaves are not that different. You of course can enjoy all of your little butterflies. I even did some fun little pieces where I really just made use of the leaves and did some sparkly backgrounds and here was one where I just used the the tip of it on the shrubs outside so then it got me thinking about the scale of things related to um, doing a, a vase a bouquet of uh, lilacs and so I'm borrowing the dye from the sunny vase and with the size of this the lilac is way too big, as you can see. So this reminded me to mention some other options. I had a piece here that I didn't die cut very well, and I wanted to remind you of a couple of tips with that. And one would be that if you have that bit of white showing, you might choose to go with a purple or even a black marker and simply um, darken that edge. Or of course you can take your scissors and trim it away. The blossoms are easy enough to cut between them and I simply created three different pieces and now those little clusters, I just sort of aimed for not cutting flowers in half, but sort of just um, grouped it, um, you know, around the flowers that were there. And now I can move those pieces around, create a beautiful small scale bouquet.
So anyway, there you can see so many different options working off of the size and scale of this. You can create a beautiful vintage look by using some of your tea or coffee stained doilies and prints. And here I stamped uh, the script and this other beautiful um, pattern. You can see you can get a lot of different looks from it. And here, for example, you could kind of design your vase by moving that around. And so I wanted to show um, the best way that I found for making this into a pop-up card. So I think the original pop-up works the best for this. And once you've run it through the machine, you, have, uh, you can fold and train all of the little folds and cuts. And this is the one that has the tabs. So simply push all the way up on each of those four tabs. And then there's another little fold at several different intervals and once I find that now I can position my vase on this piece and I can use these other tabs to attach flowers and leaves however I like uh, to create a whole three-dimensional card so if you can see from the side That's what's giving me uh, that framework to create a very simple and easy pop-up card. I also wanted to try something here with the look of a barrel. And so let's see how some of these pieces might be interesting. So what I did, I took our wood grain stamp and then I just cut some angles and it could be larger or smaller than this and let's see how this looks so again you could use all different size pieces or multiples and add some little leaves and I think maybe I need to add some little um, pieces across the front to finish it off I cut some little strips of a silver foil paper but I think those look too new and shiny. I think the black works just as well. So we'll finish it up with that. If it looks like your lilacs are floating a little bit in your composition, it's simple to just use your color pencils and add a stem, a little bit of green uh, at the bottom I think helps. And then I found just a little bit of uh, this lavender color down here worked out quite nice too and I could have stamped again a little bit to look like a hint of something but this is the simple way and now my leaves could be on top or coming from underneath and that just kind of anchors it a little bit and some pop-up squares will allow me to make it a little bit more three-dimensional the stencil brushes are a nice way to add just a soft little bit of color around the outside edge and that's going to add to my vintage look.